Oh, look at that, dude. Sheesh. Not gonna look cool for the kids on Instagram, dude. Yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> Do you remember how you felt when you saw the movie Infinity War? And if you haven't seen it, after this, you're gonna go watch it and you're gonna go repent. I'm just kidding, but you should really see that. I don't trust people who haven't seen Infinity War. But uh, that was an incredible cinematic experience for me. I remember going with my buddy Kamel, and man, I just remember being so hooked on this movie, like seeing Spider-Man and Iron Man in New York together, teaming up, seeing uh, Thor and Guardians of the Galaxy team up in space, and then seeing the Avengers team up uh, in Wakanda was just like incredible to me. And I remember going home I have this distinct memory of like replaying all of the scenes in my head because I was just so stoked on this story. Um, and so much so that I actually got into comics afterwards. Just I, I was so stuck on like uh, this narrative and um, man, it got me that that experience. Like when I think back on that, I, I think that um, part of the reason I think even our culture got so excited is because um, it's pretty human to want to be part of a story, right? In fact. I think part of the confusion that we see in America today is like we don't have a story. Like we don't have a story that inspires us. We don't have a story that guides us, that tells us who we are. I think some of the key questions that all of us are asking is, um, man, who are my people? What's my purpose? Where do I fit? Um, and there, there's this interesting uh, repetitive theme, kind of switching gears, but you'll see the tie-in uh, in the New Testament. And it's this Jewish Gentile connection. Uh, and that's kind of strange for American ears. Like if you're kind of just getting into reading the Bible, you might not understand any time that gets brought up. Um, but it's essentially our casting call into God's story. That's, th that's really what the connection's getting at. Uh, and what the connection leads to uh, is this crazy ending of humanity, all of humanity united in Jesus. Jesus isn't making a nation one, he's making the world one. Like that's ultimately what this connection will lead to. And I'm gonna explain a bit of the background for you because you might be like, hey, what does my ethnicity have to do with the story of the Bible? Uh, why does it matter if I'm Jewish or non-Jewish? Uh, that has to do with the whole story of the Bible. So here's my quick, like social media friendly uh, summary of the story of the Bible that gets us to this different connection that I'm talking about. And on a quick side note, as we get into it, I remember being in college and when I first started reading the Bible, I had no clue what I was reading. So much of it went over my head. but. Once I understood I wasn't reading a collection of motivational speeches and rules, but a story, I connected with it and I never stopped reading it and I loved it. Um, and so here's, here's my summary. The creator of the universe intervenes in human history, right? And he does so with a distinct people group. That's Israel. The nation of Israel is a main character in the Bible story, right? And so God reveals him to Israel, himself to Israel, uh, who he is, who we are, and how we're to live. Um, and so the Old Testament, the long portion of scripture that usually has the controversial stories, the wars, the monsters, the weird prayers, is actually pretty interesting. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, but that's all from the vantage point of people from the nation of Israel. And within this story, this long section of the Bible, there starts to be this through line that shows up of longing for a savior and longing for salvation. And it's murky, like at the end of the Old Testament, you're not really sure how it's all gonna come together. Like, what does salvation look like? What does true freedom and liberation look like? And who's gonna save us, right? Um, it's murky, but spoiler alert, it's Jesus. Like Jesus is God's offer of salvation. He's the answer for the longing for a savior. Um, and he's Jewish, he comes from the nation of Israel, but much to his followers and his enemies surprise, he doesn't come to be the savior of just the nation of Israel. He actually comes and reveals himself as the king and savior of the world. And so it's quite a plot twist, um, but herein lies the Jewish Gentile connection. So God's offer of salvation, Jesus comes from the Jews, right? Uh, but then it's offered to the whole world. So it's like God's intervention starts in Israel, like the epicenter is in Israel, and then it goes out and impacts other cultures, other people, um, other times, right? And so, Really what's interesting is that Jesus comes to show that the nation of Israel, God's intent the whole time was that Israel would be a blessing and sort of like a guiding influence for the rest of the nation so that they would see Israel and therein come to know God themselves. I want to take you to a passage in the book of Ephesians where the Apostle Paul lays out this story to Ephesian Christians, probably much like you and me. And what he's doing is he's giving them their casting call. He's explaining this story. He's explaining where their moment of faith comes into God's epic story. Uh, it's Ephesians chapter two, uh, and it says, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. I'm gonna skip ahead a bit because this is a long passage. 
Uh, in those days, you Gentiles were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promise, promises God had made to them. Uh, what's he talking about here? Citizenship, covenant. These Christians are not Jewish, so he's giving them context of like, hey, this is where God began his work with the nation of Israel. There's this story you need to know about. Um, and prior to Jesus, apart from being a part of that nation of Israel, you didn't have access to the one true God. But now that Jesus has come and died and paid for your sins, he's making one people. Right. So Paul's helping them understand like, yo, your faith is part of a bigger story and a bigger work that God is doing here. He finishes, you lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. This is the story we're invited into, right? Far from God, uh, but by grace brought near and made into a new community, right? And so here's the deal. Here's where the Jewish Gentile connection comes in. Here's why it relates to you is that when you become a Christian, you're invited into this new family, a new community where God takes people from all different backgrounds, all different perspectives, and he brings them together and he says, you are one. It's profound. Um, there's a lot of things in this world that people try to create connections off of. But what makes this so different is it's faith. It's based on the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so what happens when you have people from all these different backgrounds that are seemingly contradictory at points, but they worship the same God because this God forgave them of their sin. They change the world. And so you and I can change the world as we understand that our faith in Christ and what he has done for us plugs us in to a greater meta narrative that we're called to be a part of. And here's my challenge to you as I close. I would just challenge you to check out God's story. Read his story. Understand that like if you're a Christian, you're part of a greater work that God has been doing for thousands of years and is in Jesus. Uh, and I think it's better than anything and more exciting than anything you could imagine. My name is Mike Terrell. Thanks for watching my short sermon. Chabas. Good, I don't think I'm gonna do it again, dude. Was that really long?